Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome to a very special episode. Today, we're going to be doing three things. Firstly, building a new habitat. Secondly, discussing some of the issues you can have getting a franchise zoo like this to run properly. And finally, we're going to be completing the western end of the zoo. So the reason for this episode is that I get a lot of comments asking me to explore the franchise and the management side of things more often. So that's what we're going to do today. We're still going to see the build, of course. I'll try and put it into context so that hopefully we can learn some stuff about solving the issues that you can have when you're playing in franchise mode. So here we are in our tropical house. In the top right, you can see the entrance and in the top left, the exit. The first problem we have today is that hardly anyone uses the exit. A lot of people, when they get to the butterflies, it will turn around and then they will walk out back through the entrance. In fact, these people are doing it right now. And that's an issue because it causes congestion in here. Now the reason people aren't really using the exit brings us on to our second problem. This is the exit looking nice. The problem is when we zoom out, this is what the end of Amazonia looks like. And it's been looking like this for a very long time now. It is awful. So what we need to do is give them a reason to use this exit and simultaneously turn this absolute disaster into something worthy of San Bernardino Zoo. So the way we're gonna fix it is by building a habitat for the new collared peccary in here. And then we can run a path out of the exit, past the peccary, and then up to the Jaguar Dome. And that way the guests will have a reason to come out of here. And we've also got much better guest flow with two different ways to get to the Jaguar Dome. Now we do have one of our staff buildings very close by to where we're gonna be building this habitat over here. So we're well covered with keeper hut and staff room. And if we go around to the other side, you can see that due to the way the Jaguar Dome was built, this is actually up on a hill. So that's one of the things that we're gonna achieve with this habitat is joining together the hill with the flat area where the tropical house is. So let's work out how big the habitat for these peccaries is gonna to need to be. We're gonna start off with five of them and then we're gonna allow them to breed and we'll keep some of the babies around and we'll build up the habitat that way. So if we're gonna have five adults, then we're gonna need 339 meters. It uh, looks like it's gonna fit really nicely into this area. We move this over here. We want it to incorporate the hill and then we'll leave space for the path to sort of curve up towards the Jaguar dome there. Now I want this collared peccary habitat to be the complete opposite of the Red River Hog habitat that we built a few weeks ago. This place is gonna be a mud bath. It's gonna be a lot of fun to build. And speaking of the Red River Hogs, we have had a baby boom in our mixed species habitat. Let's go and check it out. Oh, wow, they are cute. Look at them. These guys have been in the game for a while now. I've never used them. I'm really happy that we added them into San Bernardino because these are absolutely adorable. The bongos have had a baby as well. I can't decide which is cuter. But I think it's safe to say this habitat is running really nicely. Now, while we're over here, we are gonna grab the shelter for the Red River Hogs and install it in the peccary habitat. No sense in building this all over again. I really like this little shed. And then we're gonna sort the barriers out. So we've done something I don't do very often here, which is to use the standard barriers to make the barrier for this habitat. I actually like this chain link fence. I think we'll replace the posts with something a bit more unique. And then we're gonna put some rocks around it to keep the guests away from the actual fence. Now, as the guests are gonna be coming out of the exit and then walking past the habitat here, what we need to do is raise the terrain so that it meets with the path up here. So the way we're gonna do that is to use the flatten to surface tool and position it so that we get just a really subtle gradient going downwards and then drag that across here until it meets up with the path here and then do the same from here. And then we can get the paths in. So we're gonna turn on the snap alongside barrier option and then we can easily just place a path that runs alongside this barrier here and goes up the hill to join with the Jaguar Dome. Now, if you haven't seen the Tropical House episode, the concept for this area is that Amazonia is a pretty new area in the zoo, but the Tropical House is one of the zoo's original buildings that's been here for 100 years. I want to extend that theme with this new habitat, and we're gonna landscape around the Tropical House to make it feel even more like this classic building that's been left standing in the middle of a much more modern area. So we're gonna do that using this rock. So we'll copy this, get it nice and flat, and then we'll turn on random rotation and start using this to bridge the two areas together. And then we'll start copying it across and just bringing it slightly lower down each time. This is gonna show the guests where to walk, basically. And that provides like a nice end to these paving slabs, stops them from just disappearing. And then we can fill this with some nice plants. So we'll probably just take one of these slices of jungle here, and then we'll put this into position. We'll just keep moving it around till I'm happy with where it is. Something like that looks good. And there we go, the surrounding area is looking good. Now we can get stuck into the habitat itself. All right, now to choose a fence post. This twilight portcullis wooden beam. We slot this in here, 
It's got a nicer color than the uh, existing post, but it still gives us this texture from the, the fence. Should take a long time to replicate ourselves. And then I also found this wooden arbor panel, which I like. I think we're gonna use this as well. If we get this so it is underneath this wire here, we've got this nice, slightly faded bits of paint on it as well, which I think looks really good. And that adds an extra bit of strength to the bottom of the fence where the peccaries are gonna be rooting about. And then we can simply copy them all the way along this fence here. All right, the fence is all in, looking good, and now we can have some fun. What I wanna do is make the muddiest habitat that you have ever seen. So the way we're gonna try and do that is, firstly, we're just gonna put a little bit of a depression in here, and then we're gonna use the mud baths. So what I'm gonna do is see how many of these that we can fit into the habitat. Now, it's quite challenging. You can't have them too close to the barriers. You can't have them too close to water. You can't have them too close to any other enrichment items because they need space for the animals to do the animations when they're in there. But we'll see how many we can squeeze into this main area. I've managed to get three in. And what we're gonna do is build the terrain up so that you can't see that these are separate mud baths. What I want is an effect that the whole habitat is just one big muddy wallow where all the terrain has basically just been completely destroyed by the peccary and it's just mud central in here. So we'll build up the terrain around all of these and then we'll replace the grass with the heavy soil texture which gives us a nice muddy look. Once we've covered the whole habitat in the mud we'll take a look at it Yep, that definitely looks muddy. And now we want to add some detail. So we'll put some little bits of short grass here and there and some little bits of lighter dirt. And then to further sell the idea that this isn't just three mud baths that have been hidden under the terrain, we're going to start joining up the mud with these stalactite pieces. We'll color match it to get it as close as possible and then start copying them across the habitat. Next, we need some rocks to join the high part of the habitat to the low part of the habitat. And back in the Red River Hog habitat, we've got exactly the rock arrangement that we need to do that. So we're gonna bring some of these across and start joining the two heights together here in front of the shed. And then we'll do the same all the way across this part of the habitat so it looks really natural. And that's the basic structure of the habitat complete. So now it's time for Franchise Masters. So one of the questions I get asked the most is about managing your staff and how to do that efficiently. So I'm gonna show you an example on the Amazon Riverwalk here. Above the path in the center, we got a big habitat for Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman, an even bigger habitat for the Spectacle Cayman, and then a massive habitat for the giant otter. And I run all of these with one keeper. We achieve that with careful placement of habitat gates and staff buildings. So here is the Dwarf Cayman gate. Here is the Spectacle Cayman gate and down here is the gate for the giant otters and then in between all three of them we have our research center which features a keeper hut and a staff building now because that is directly between all three of them and because i've kept them all so close together our keepers here are able to walk very quickly from the staff room and keeper hut into each of the three habitats and despite the size we only need one keeper to manage all of it back to the build for franchise mode the color peccary is absolutely perfect because it supports desert tropical grassland and temperate foliage and north central and south america as a region so for once we can build a habitat where the animal is going to be 100 percent happy rather than the standard sort of 98 99 percent we're going to start with some of this big blue stem grass um, and mix the dry and the uh, normal grasses together so we can get a nice splash of color in this little part of the habitat next to this little bit of water here. I purposely made the water dirty because let's face it, that is what it's gonna look like in a habitat for these guys. And then we're gonna drop a load of grass in. Rather than using the default long grass, we're gonna drop loads of the buffalo grass in. And then once we've got a nice little arrangement, we're gonna select it all and drop it down so just the tips of the grass stems are poking out. Rather than making it look lush, it just adds a little bit of interest to the habitat and a different color. And I kind of figure around the margins of the habitat where we're gonna place this grass. The grass is gonna be less destroyed by the peccary. And it just gives a kind of two-tone effect. We've got little bits of green in and around all the uh, brown. Thank you for all your comments on last week's Gorilla Mountain episode, by the way. That went down really well. Really glad that you enjoyed the longer episode. I think if I ever feel like I'm really struggling to get an episode down to 15 minutes again in the future, then I'll probably do more 20 minute episodes like that. Wasn't necessary this week. Just got a cute little build here, trying to get the most realistic peccary habitat that I can. But obviously it's not particularly large and it is 90% mud. So I don't think it needs a full 20 minutes this week. 
So that's the grass done. We're gonna drop in a few more elements here, a nice dead tree, and then loads of the tropical leaf litter. Again, mostly around the margins of the habitat, just brings another shade of color into the habitat. And this kind of uh, detritus is gonna be very prominent in habitats like this. There is going to be a load of trees surrounding this later on, uh, which is where all the leaves come from. <laughs> we don't have any trees in the habitat itself. I'm pretty happy with this now, so let's take a look at how it's shaping up. Uh, before we add the finishing touches to the habitat, I'm going to show you something that I've never shown you before, which is adding the latest Explorers Club member to the members monolith. Thought you might want to see how this actually works. So here's the monolith. And the way this thing works is that inside these pieces here is a load of the Australian signs, quite a few of them now. And all we do is we'll select the bottom sign. We're going to move this down into the correct position like so. And then we'll get back inside the monolith and add the latest name, Bricksmouth. Thank you so much for joining. Don't know if it's Bricksmouth or Bricksmouth, which way they, uh, they pronounce it. But there we go. There's the latest member added into the monolith. And as always, hit the join button on the channel if you want to see yourself here. Right, let's add the finishing touches to the build. Starting with a herb scent marker, we'll put that nice and close to the barriers to encourage the peccary to come near the front. We'll put a load of the watermelon feeders in as well. And then we're going to make a little custom water trough so I discovered when we built the tapir habitat that you can actually have this off the ground slightly and the animals will still use it if you get the position right. So we're going to put this just above the grass and then we're going to build some wood planks around it and make it look like a, um, a nicely designed wooden water trough rather than just the sort of metal tray that the game provides us with. So we're going to use some more of the twilight pieces here and uh, just get a couple of these very thin planks in. We'll do some rotating as always so they don't look all the same and then we will move them across and once we've got a few of them together we can group them like so and then just easily make the surround with it it's such a simple little thing this literally just two pieces but it looks so nice when it's done so much better than just having a metal tray sort of lying on the floor we might have to do some fiddling about with the exact height of it etc to make sure that the animals can drink from it once we've got the peccaries in here the inside of the shelter that you can see behind this, by the way, is very simple. It's uh, just a pig pen, really. So we're not going to go into building that. Just some concrete pens, basically. But yeah, that's the water trough done. Really happy with that. And that's the habitat itself pretty much finished. All we need to do now is take care of this area and get the western end of San Bernardino Zoo complete. So we're going to grab one more of these jungle pieces and then modify this so that it fits the end of the zoo. We're going to put loads more rocks in it and rearrange the trees. And then what that will do is A, finish off this end of the zoo, B, provide a really nice lush backdrop to this very muddy habitat, and C, block out the view of the rest of the map when you are in the zoo so that what's happening outside the bounds of the zoo is left to your imagination rather than just seeing a big swathe of blank map. Let's take a look at the finished habitat and see if we have solved our problems. Yes, guests are finally using the exit of the tropical house. We've got people looking at the peccary, guests walking up towards it. We've got some coming down from the Jaguar Dome. We have solved the problem. And perhaps more importantly, the end of the zoo now actually looks like the end of a zoo rather than just a big blank space. I'm so happy with this little build, how it has tied it all together. Just shows you what you can do with one simple little muddy habitat. It's not as easy as you'd think to make a realistic muddy looking habitat. It takes quite a lot of um, terrain painting and obviously hiding these mud baths in and the peccaries are all over them pretty much always covered in mud, which is exactly what you want to see. I'm really glad Frontier added these into the game. Zoos are always full of pigs and their relatives, and we've only had, what, two of them uh, for quite a while now. So it's great to get a third species in here. And it's also really fun to build a little habitat like this that you might find in a tiny little zoo, even a farm anywhere around in the world, rather than the big habitats that we normally build. This is the view at the end of Amazonia now. It is so good to finally have it finished. You can just see the peccary habitat in the center there. And that was just a big hole before. And now there's this vista across the whole area that looks really good. Now with the western end of the zoo finished, I've got a little treat for you before we go. Something I've never shown before, an aerial view of the entire zoo. So we can see where everything fits together in context. There we go. So we've just been working on the very far left of the screen there. Peccary habitat is just coming into view. And then we go right the way across Amazonia, the water terraces and Australia to the islands. And then you can see the little uh, island of Africa at the top of the screen. 
Next week, we'll be back in Africa doing something fiendishly complex and very big. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I'll see you again next week. Bye.